Hello, Todd Bog here with Breaking the Stream, and welcome to a new Let's Play of Conquest of Elysium 4. Um, so we just finished up our playthrough with the Warlock, and we got to see some pretty cool summons at the end of it. Uh, so I was pretty happy with how that playthrough ended up. Um, we definitely had some good luck with the starts and then some of the resources we got for sure, but uh, it kind of worked out for us. Uh, now we're going to start with a new class, and we're down to three. Um, and since two of them relate to the undead, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Mark Graph is going to be our, our class for today, or, or for this series, I should say. So we'll do our usual settings, large map and uh, random for the society. Um, again, this will be beginner friendly and um, will be played to completion. So uh, definitely uh, join me for this ride. I think you're going to have fun. Uh, I always play at the count difficulty with uh, six additional AI players uh, so a total of seven of us um, the count difficulty is chosen um, I could probably succeed on higher uh, difficulties although maybe not as a mark graph player uh, but the it just becomes more of a grind and less fun so I think this provides us the uh, the ideal uh, difficulty for showcasing and being entertaining at the same time so as I said we're gonna do the mark graph so we'll show what that's up Think of the Markgrafs as part of the Bergmeisters, they're, they're hobbits, essentially. Uh, but the Markgraf are a different version of the Hobbit Society, whereas the Bergmeister is your traditional um, monarchy and, uh, and fiefdoms and all that, and you have a, a, you know, a lord and all these normal troops. Uh, the Markgraf is a little bit darker, so um, we'll kind of read through some of this because this is going to be big. Uh, hopefully in some of our decisions we can incorporate this, but the first Mark Graf was once one of the richest persons in a Hoburg, uh, but he was bested to the title of Burgmeister. The Mark Graf then decided to withdraw himself from the Hoburger society altogether, setting up his domain as that of a Graf, modeled on the human barons. For a few generations, this remote area of the Hoburger society was more or less self-sufficient, but a bit leaner than their neighbors. The Mark Graf's managed to live well off his subjects, and no renegade survived to tell the tale. Many Hoburgers of ill repute had found their refuge in the towns of the Markgraftum, as they have already broken with the customs of mainstream Hoburger society. As the Markgraf's domains are more barren and worn down than the rest of the Hoburg lands, the Markgrafs have tried every means available to improve the lot of their subjects and themselves. The subjects of the Markgraf are quiet and suspicious people. Strangers who come to visit will find their doors are closed and no one will speak to them in the tavern. One of the more noteworthy subjects of the Markgraf is the Necromant, a Hoburger with an affinity for the necromantic arts. The Markgraf has seen the potent... Poten uh, the potential of using no necromancy and put them to work on all kinds of projects. Necromants collect the left hands of dead criminals that can be found in towns and large villages. They're called Hands of Glory contain power that can be used in necromantic rituals. They can raise the dead to create armies but risk their sanity in the process. However, a more important task for the necromant is ensure internal life for the Markgraf by transforming into a vampire. So that's going to be part of our target here. Uh, Hobergs are small and weak and move slowly. All of those are terrible. Necromants connect, collect Hands of Glory from large villages in town, can use Hands of Glory to perform rituals, and raise the dead at the cost of sanity. So, so a bit more in-depth than unusual, but uh, as you can see, they're a break-off uh, or a splinter of the uh, Hoburger Society, so they're slightly different. Their troops have different titles and names, although I think performance-wise they're pretty much the same. Uh, the big difference, of course, is summoning the dead. So... All right, we got everything set up. We're going to do unique random players so we get a different AI for each one. And uh, we'll go, away we go. So we're creating the world here, and then we'll create our Lord, Todd Bog. All hail Todd Bog. All right, so uh, as you can see, we start with a small graveyard for a small source of hand income, and already we're in danger of losing it. Uh, lots of random wandering monsters. Okay. Uh, we also start with a farm, and we got a nice coastal hamlet nearby, so we can definitely take advantage of that. Um, but basically, let's take a look at our lord. Uh, so we're the Mark Graf. Uh, despite the apparent coherence of the Hoburg Society, there's some opposition to the current order. Be invested in an election to the title Bergmeister, the ancestor of the current Mark Graf. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is all actually just a remix of what we just read through, so we won't need to do that. But this is our leader. Um... Got a leadership too, so basically people are more willing to stick around and fight for him, but slow, and this is going to be the theme for our army. Uh, only two action points, so uh, in other words, we only get two of these diamonds here, and that's what we use to move around the map. Every map tile costs one, unless it has boots, in which case it costs the number of boots you see. So deserts cost two, uh, forests cost two, and so forth, so, um, so that's pretty good. 
The Necromant, though, uh, it's believed the Necromants established themselves in the Markgraftum a few decades ago after being banned in Hoburg. Though the Hoburgers generally lack an understanding and prowess in the arts of magic, some seems to still have an understanding for the art of necromancy, perhaps due to their close association with the soil. A few years ago, there was even a Hoburg necromancer, Sigmunda Strobel, at this very college, who was not without insight into the dark arts. Recently, the necromants gained access to the Markgraf Council because they cooperated in finding a way to copy the Hoburg manufactories. Being well-versed in the art of preservation, one of the first manufactories to be populated solely by undead workers was the manufactory of Hermann Fleischer's Fine Pickled Meats. Oh, boy. There were some complaints of fingers in the pickles, which pitched the Markgraf into a lengthy legal battle with the Fleischer family. Amazing. But, uh, yes, we have Decay, uh, which is a powerful spell uh, because basically anybody who suffers from Decay will die at the end of the fight. They'll take one damage per round until they die. There's no way to stop it as far as I know. Strength Sap is a weakness, so it causes the enemy to do less damage. Not really as useful for these guys because of how little in the way we have hit points we have. But, uh, but at least we have that. So we cast spells. We're slow. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. So those are our leaders. These are our armies. So we start with uh, Hobmark soldiers, uh, which have one armor and three life. So um, the armor, the way it works, they have a shield for zero to one, and the armor blocks another one. So they'll block one to two damage on average um, from any enemy attacks. Um, and on average, the enemies do usually one to four to one to six damage for their, their basic troops. So, uh, so it gives them a little survivability, but not very much. Uh, as you can see, because they're small and weak, uh, they're doing D4 minus 1 damage. And the way this works is uh, it does 1 to 4. Normally it would be a 4-sided die. However, you subtract 1 from the top, so now it's a 3-sided die. So you just do less damage. So uh, so we got a bunch of those guys, which uh, are the ones with the spears. Uh, we also have swordsmen, which are defenders. Uh, they have a short sword, so they do a little more damage. Uh, 1 to 4 after the minus is applied. Uh, but otherwise, they're identical. Um, and uh, then we have the crossbows and this is probably going to be our saving grace at least for the basic troop types because they do uh, uh, 1 to 4 damage at a range of 5 and um, as you can see if you get to them they die in droves because they only have 2 hit points but they're going to be the damage dealers in this army these guys are just meant to keep uh, the enemy away from these guys now the downside for crossbows versus a bow is that it only fires every 2 rounds as you got to reload a round um, so um, not as effective as bows, but definitely more effective than anything we have. So we can take a look at the recruits. Militia, I will never recruit. They're just trash uh, for zero armor, two life, and two damage, one to two damage. Um, they're just not worth it, um, especially for the cost of gold. Unless we absolutely have no iron whatsoever. Although since we start with trade, I'm going to basically use that to get iron. So... So instead, you would want to get those soldiers I mentioned, uh, just because they have the extra hit point, extra damage, and an armor and a shield. Um, so yeah, just better in every regard. Um, or the crossbows, which I mentioned before. And the thing you'll notice here is that they come in large groups of 15 and then 10 for their uh, more elite troops. Uh, this is different than most other armies, which only get them in groups of five. So you can definitely get large armies of these guys. They're just not very effective. So uh, a more elite army will tear them apart, for instance. So. But you got the crossbows, you got soldiers, you got defenders for a little more. Uh, defenders have the swords uh, instead of the spears. Uh, cost more iron, though. Hammers are uh, two-handed, and this is actually really good, um, and somebody I might use. Because they have two armor, so they instead of having a shield, which is random, uh, they have the extra point of armor instead. And then they do one to six damage, which is uh, a bit bit stronger than uh, than you expect. And the Pikeneers uh, do one to four damage, but they have the long-range trait, so they can fight in two ranks. Those are usually pretty useful, although I end up not using them usually. And then Markgraf Guards. This is probably uh, our bread and butter once we have the iron production. Uh, just because they have the two armor and the shield. Um, although, yeah, it's just a small shield. So, it's not the same as our uh, Markgraf. Hmm. They may not be as desirable as I thought. The uh, other Markgrafs, I believe, get the large shield. Which blocks uh, zero to three damage. So, um, they're definitely a lot more survivable than this group. So, hmm. I'll have to think about that. And then Hog Hussars are their one uh, group of uh, mobile, and that's because they get three action points, so they're not slow. 
and they have uh, armor one, five hit points, and they get this once uh, per battle lance charge, short sword, and the gore attack from the boar. So um, eventually we might build an army of the hussars alone that can go out and capture things on the map. So, all right. And then finally, we've got our special powers here. So we got Rituals of Mastery, which allow you to get new abilities here. Um, he can just raise the dead. Um, ritual only works if there are human corpses at the location. Does not count it, cost any resources, but it does take a toll on your sanity. So this allows you to basically summon dead. Um, if you can go to graveyards, battlefields, or places where there have been large battles, uh, you'll get more out of them, but you'll slowly go insane, and we'll cover that. And then Flesh Rite uh, turns the Mark Graf or Mark Meister into a Ghoul Baron. Um, we must both be at an old castle ruin and the ghoul baron is capable of necromancy and can also regain sanity by eating a substantial amount of people. So, um, and we'll see what that means later, but, but yeah, so right now we're only getting one, so it'll be a while. I can do a raise dead spell, uh, though, so let's see. Uh, slight presence of dead here. So let's do one. And as you can see... We're just getting some didgeridoo sounds, and then we got some little long dead, because we have halflings here, which are utterly worthless other than being meat shields. Um, but, you know, every little bit will count. So for now, though, we're going to spend our action point to come and grab that. And uh, you are going to transfer up just about everything there. And uh, you'll go out on adventures after this. So now this right here is pretty nice. Um, gives a good gold income. Um, oh yeah, let's turn that trade on to buy iron. We got gem deposits, which just give us gold. Um, other factions will use it. Oh, we have a Hoburg village all the way down here. Weird. All right. So yeah, we just got a lot of little things here. So we'll have to clear out our area first to eliminate the wanderers so they don't kill us. And uh, we'll be good. Uh, can't recruit anything because I don't have the gold. So we're going to go ahead and turn. Um, so you lose if you lose your last commander or you lose if you lose your last um, citadel. So we have to be very careful on that. So, all right, Adeland. All right, we're going to be safe. We're going to leave three crossbows behind. And we're going to kill these wolves because I need that hand of glory. I told you they were going to take it right away. These snakes are going to be problematic too. So At this point, I can't really do anything with my lord. So we're just going to end turn. We just murder them with the crossbows. So, see... And one of the things you'll uh, find in this game is that you're going to constantly be fighting against the wildlife as they'll constantly take your resources and you'll lose out. Um, so it's going to be a lot of that. But once you get into the acceptance that you're going to lose your points of interest and you're just it's a part of the gameplay, uh, it really does make things uh, a little bit more palatable for sure. So, all right. So we'll go here. Okay, cool. It looks like a naked gem deposit. I'm hoping that's the case. Hoping it isn't invisible. Whatever's on there. So we'll wait one more turn and then we'll uh, summon some crossbows. So good. It is. So that's two gold there for us. Excellent. All right. We'll go ahead and turn. And then with the crossbows, I think we can crash into this uh, gate here. Oh. And then snow here basically means that uh, it'll take an extra action point to uh, um, to actually travel. So this would normally be one, but now it's two because of snow. This is three, and then if you have mountains, um, those go up to four. Um, all right. So let's do a recruit. Uh, let's see. Where are they? Crossbows. All right. Let's go ahead and transfer up everything. And uh, let's uh, use our horde. Horde mode activated. All right, so this will bring this group here against this group here. 
and their bows are going to do some damage from those walls, but uh, ultimately our crossbows are going to overwhelm them, so. Let's see, just like I said. And now we have ourselves a second citadel, which is fantastic. So now we can do double recruits if we have the gold, but uh, ultimately that means if they take one, we still have another to survive on. Plus, it just has better resources than our original. Although, the Fortified Hoberg does have trade, which is useful. That's how I'm getting iron right now. All right. So, out of land, let's go ahead and transfer. We'll grab all of it, and then we'll leave behind four crossbowmen. Uh, we can leave behind another three. And then... Uh, Yep, out of land, we'll go ahead and grab uh, the next resource we can get. Uh, Todd Bog, let's go ahead and grab those four. And we'll head up here. And that way we, we're protected against random animals on both of these. Definitely won't protect against a dedicated enemy army, but right now we're not fighting a dedicated enemy army, so we can make do here. All right, so now we can go exploring, and we definitely can't fight a manacor. This thing would eat us alive, um, only because of its two armor. So that means that we're just going to be doing lots of plinks at it. Um, you are going to sentry up at this point. There really isn't any reason to get you moving around. Um, okay, so we're not going to deal with the manacor, but that's fine. We don't have to. Um, go ahead and turn. So something to keep in mind, the way damage works, you have that die, you roll like a D3, like I said, for uh, for most of my guys. Uh, that D3 is uh, an exploding die, though. So if you roll max, which is three damage, you would then roll again, but you subtract one from the roll. And if you roll max again, which is three, um, you can keep rolling. So it could theoretically go unlimited uh, in terms of how much damage you can do, but realistically it's not going to do that so but that's a way to overcome some of the higher armor um, that you might see on people so there's a ring of protection huh so this is a mage school you can get some um, you can train your wizards here and everything like that um, also controlling it gives you a higher chance of getting mages we won't be able to take it out right now because um, the magic users here the Iron Arcana can do some pretty nasty spells that can wipe out our army pretty quickly. Uh, so we'll take the resource that's presented here. Um, building up that gold, that's awesome. Alright, so we're good there, we're good there. End turn. So one of the things I did, I played the Bergmeisters early. Oh, man. Now you get to see what happens here. managed to get it but that was a blow to our army for sure um, all right well let's uh, raise the dead all right melee lines been replenished but uh, uh, we got to worry about our sanity here because um, now we're 16 insane um, so Basically, as we get insane, there's a chance we won't be able to move our army because uh, we're, we're going crazy. Uh, so we have to be careful of that. But um, at least uh, we managed to fight off that thing. I wasn't sure if our crossbows would do it, but the crossbows did uh, did exactly what they're supposed to do. So that's good. Um, okay. Anyways, yeah. So we'll go ahead and turn. We've almost got enough iron to do another recruit. Okay. So we can kill these wolves now. Um, let's go ahead and grab ourselves. Do I want to go with soldiers or the more crossbows? Um, hmm, debate. All right, we're going to go with soldiers much as I want crossbows. Um, reason I want the soldiers is I need to uh, kill these wolves here so I can take these guys and these guys. The crossbows will do the work but I need something to stand in front of the, the wolves. Okay, 
Uh, let's, all right, we'll just grab all these that we can here. Um, unfortunately, these aren't sufficient size to give me Hands of Glory. I need the next level up, which is called the Village. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm not powering up my Necromancer right now, but I just have to wait for that income. We've already lost the Enchanter, Gospert. Uh, was conquered by independence. So in other words, wolves or bears or something stood up on the uh, their citadel and took them out. So, all right. So we got our first leader, Ladar the Markmeister, um, which allows you to get a cavalry leader, which has three action points. Um, yep. You know what? We're gonna grab him, and we're grabbing him for a very particular reason, because we don't want him to die, but he might, because I just walked into an ancient forest there. Um, and if he can manage to survive, we can scout out. As you can see, he moves much faster. So we'll go back to centering with you for now. All right. What do we got here? 13 units. That would be a little more problematic. Um, because they'll have, uh, seven archers, um, these guys are pretty tough too, so with their three armor. But I think our crossbows would make short work of them. Um, these guys all shoot, but yeah, let's uh, let's kill the bandits for now. I don't think we have quite enough for this, but if we can get it, as you see, it's two hands of glory. So we'll uh, we'll come back to that. All right. Yep. And of course, the animals attack. So that was just a waste of gold. That sucks. Oh well. Uh, Alright, so this we can take out. Just a bunch of monkeys and uh, lion tribe warriors. Um, now they do have a caster. Nope, he's just elite. Lion King. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> so that'll be a, just the same as these hamlets though. So we'll come back to you, Oceanville. We will come back to you. Alright, well let's go ahead and wake up you and kill some more wolves. All right, that would have been nice to have, but um, I guess we won't get that necromant. Kill more wolves. And we'll go ahead and crush them. Nice and easy. Okay, Autumn is here. All right, so... Mm, do I keep pushing? We well, might as well. These moose will do a number on us, but uh, otherwise we're in pretty good shape. So we might as well scout out slightly in force. Elephant, that thing. 52 hit points in one armor. Alright, I don't want to attack it right now. So we've got another lion tribe we can take out, so we'll do that. 69 gold. All right, waiting one turn and we'll get some more crossbowmen. Okay, and that's the Markman, basically just a leader. So nothing crazy. Grab that crossbow. All right, so we got a tower with two giant spiders here. Um, these guys are bigger than you think, 28 hit points and one armor. Um, they'd be more than enough for this force, uh, to eliminate this force. These guys are pretty tough too. Um, that acid spray really is, uh, is a bummer for sure. Um, but we can definitely take this out. So we'll, uh, we'll work on that next. Get the resources. The tower is just another recruit point, but it doesn't provide any resources. So, all right, Markmeister and a Necromant. And we have just enough for the Necromant. So let's get him. So we will uh, see what he's got. He's got Raise Dead and then Dark Knowledge. When it's performed, the spirits of the Netherworld will reveal a location in the world where there are many corpses. The more corpses, the greater chance for it to be revealed. So that costs three hands, huh? Now at this point, I don't have an army that would be capable of taking advantage of it, but we'll keep that in mind. All right, we're going to crash into that. 24 units. This has got a catapult, so that's a siege weapon. 
The way Siege works is there's 15 rounds prior to a start of a battle where Siege weapons attack. And then based on their attack, uh, in this case every two rounds, uh, they'll fire once and hit a spot. It's not accurate, so it will scatter, um, but wherever it lands, it will hit whatever's there. And as you can see, it does 1 to 30 damage, so it rolls a 30-sided die. Um, and it'll hit basically seven times, because there's 15 rounds and it fires every other round. So, um, so pretty powerful. It can eliminate up to seven units pretty easily uh, and quickly. Uh, then they have just four crossbows and then a bunch of pike. Um, so not too bad as far as the archery on the walls, but the pikemen do make up for that with their ability to fight. So go here. And then turn. So as you can see, those swordsmen definitely did a number on our troops. Alright, winter is here. So we're actually not doing bad in terms of gaining gold. At this point, though, I do need to return home, and it's going to be slow going, because I go one space through each of this, but... We'll keep working our way through. Um, so now we've got this. I think... I hate using Ray's dead here, but... It is strong presence. Let's do it. There we go. That's good. So that's actually quite beefy. Uh, these guys have 10 hit points each. They don't do much damage, 1 to 2. Uh, and they're clumsy, so they miss half of their attacks, but... Uh, they are pierce resistant, so archery doesn't really bug them as much. So, uh, so we might uh, utilize them, come back and take out this uh, port now that we have the undead we need. Um, that will really speed up our hand income here. So, and that's all she wrote for this round. Markman. All right, we can kill two boars. So we'll do that on our way over. Clean up a little. So this uh, ancient forest. I don't think I mentioned. Yeah. See, now he's insane. Because uh, he's got 28 insanity, he can't move. That sucks. Um, and I don't think you can use special powers. Uh, not worth it for now, anyways. Um, so yeah, this is what insanity does, so it's a little tough. But um. Anyways, what was I saying? I was saying something. Um... Oh yeah, ancient forests uh, are the source of all these animals. They'll continue to produce them. Um, of course you're at the spot I want to go to. Alright, fine, we'll go this way. Oh, I should have gone this way. Oh well. Um, so basically they'll keep spawning animals until you take care of the forest one way or the other. Usually setting fire to it. Or certain classes and races can take control of the forest. So... All right, we're at spring. All right. So we got that. Oh, yeah, what were your spells? Drain life. That's really good. Um, not so great for him, though, because if he's damaged, um, he's usually dead. But if he's got one hit point, he can drain life and bring it back. Either way, though, it's a range five, so it's like a, an archery. Um, does one to six magic damage, um, which is armor negating, so that's really good. And then disease, not my favorite, um, because it just doesn't do much in combat. It's more uh, a screw you to the, uh, let's see, just double checking what I have here. Uh, more of a screw you to the um, people afterwards, because anybody who's diseased will slowly die. Uh, they'll take one hit point of damage um, Uh, per game turn until they die. Um, so doesn't do anything really in a battle that I'm aware of. It might have an impact. I'm not sure. Um, but I haven't figured that out. So so that's one of those questions. And of course you're crazy again. So all right. Go ahead and turn. So now we got ourselves a nice army up with our Mark Graf. Um, I am just called a Mark Graf, right? Yeah, for now. For now, until I convert things. Uh, let's see. You can move out. Oh my god. A lion. 23 hit points, and it's pretty hard, but it will die to a horde of crossbows. Uh, let's see. What do we want to do here? Twenty-four units, huh? I 
think we can take that out with all the crossbows we have, so maybe we do that. Do a double port takeover, and then we'll just drop some crossbows on it to defend it. Uh, 54 gold. All right, we're good. Um, mm, no. Uh, I could drop slingers, and that might be a last-minute defense. Um, because they're cheap, I don't want to take them on combat with me so they can defend my walls against enemies. But let's keep the gold in case we get some more necromants. Um, all right. So the lion moved out. Uh, let's see. I can take out the High Lord and his friends, but let's take out the Lion instead. Uh, the question, do I go for the Guard Tower? And yeah, let's do the Guard Tower first, because that gives me a recruit point. So if I need to reinforce, I can do so. And the two spiders shouldn't be a problem for our army. And I say shouldn't, but... Oh yeah, and this will get us trade as well, so we'll be able to get iron at a much faster pace. Albeit at a cost of gold, but... Okay. So we're going to use our action point to do a scout, and then we'll crash. So many things just hanging out. Alright. Alright, so we got 13 units in port. Let's do it. And uh, we'll in turn. All right, as expected. And yep, poison killed one of my guys, but overall, uh, as expected as well there too. So let's go ahead and transfer. Uh, we'll do just three crossbow. Um, should I do a recruit here? What do I have right now? I have a pretty good melee line. Let's get more crossbows. Uh, crossbow, crossbow, crossbows. There we go. Um, if you're wondering, I'm doing a long right click on the, um, uh, tower here to recruit directly from it. It's something I didn't learn until much later. Oh, okay. So these guys all shoot. That's the nasty thing. They do have slings, but they only do one to two damage. Uh, these guys have bows and they do one to three. Um, and a city is much better than a port. And they actually have less troops. So yeah, I guess we'll crash into that. Um, and you're crazy again, but hey, you got a source of hand income, so that's awesome. Uh, before I forget, though, let's go ahead and transfer out the three crossbowmen that are going to defend it. Um, and then uh, did something take... I thought I had two lion tribe villages. There's the one. Oh, there it is. Yeah, something did take it. All right, and they took my hamlet again, so fantastic. But that's that's what you did, right? So, all right. But we're now up to three trade because we took this port here. And uh, let's see, sixty-six gold. We're gonna wait. So end turn. All right. Yeah, the bandits are just a better choice, um, only because the catapult and the crossbows are just gonna do a number. So we're gonna take some casualties to our front line, but it's definitely worth it for sure. So. All right, you're up and running again. We already did the transfer of the three. Yep. So, all right. Strong presence of the dead, huh? All right, since we're getting more hands, let's do a there. Okay, twice born, only possible in citadels and graveyards. Um, basically, you will ensure you don't die. You'll raise yourself as a white or a ghost. Um, and retain all your necromantic powers. Um, so if cast in a citadel, we'll rise as some kind of white. If cast in a graveyard, we'll rise as a ghost instead. Um, so that's really cool. But what it means is that uh, you'll be if you become a white or a ghost, uh, I don't know if it's like a lich. Um, but basically when you die, you, you'll return. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but that does cost 30, so... All right, let's move out. We're going to recapture this and work our way back home to uh, do some recruitment uh, for sure. So, 
and turn. Please don't kill everybody. Crossbows. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. All right. So now we've got ourselves a city. We're going to grab ourselves a port soon. Um, let's see. We can do a quick recruit here. Let's see. What do we got? Our melee line is in trouble, isn't it? So we'll recruit melee. We'll get some more soldiers. So we'll grab them. We'll drop four off for the city for now. So the city has given us three hands of glory. So we're up to six. That's fantastic. Five gold, two more trades. So now we're getting five iron a turn uh, for five gold a turn. So and then when we take this, we'll be uh, in a good enough spot that we can do recruits pretty easily. We're making decent gold. So um, yeah, I feel very confident we're going to take this port. Ooh, those pike, but those crossbow. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Cool. More stuff. And then um, we'll probably end up. Um, all right. I know I can take you. It's going to cause some casualties, but hey, they, they already died once. So what what's another time, right? All right. Let's do this. There we go. So that crossbow does nothing after the siege. Ballista are the ones you have to be worried about because they still fire afterwards. But we took it. We now have seven, seven wonderful trade here. Let's go ahead and transfer out. Uh, we'll do five of our crossbowmen here because we're going to replenish them pretty quickly. Uh, as a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and get ourselves. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go with uh, defenders, I think, at this point. Actually, let's see. Hammers. Let's do the math. It's 10 gold more. So you spend 60 and the same number of hammers and you get 20 instead of 15. Why am I not getting hammers? I'm an idiot. Oh, maybe because of the higher iron costs. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, yeah, because they just do a lot more damage. They have the two armor base instead of these guys uh, with the shield doing one to four damage so yeah okay oh math done math completed and uh i found myself uh the better choice okay cool so with that we're gonna go ahead and call it here as always if you enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe it means a lot and um you know this is going to be an interesting series i uh, decided on them because obviously we have the necromancer left to play and the druid left to play and since uh, I didn't want to go back to back with a similar class, uh, I figured this will be a nice primer for the Necromancer eventually when I do play him. So, uh, so as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I probably said that already, um, but uh, I will catch you guys next time.